So in the past examples, we were looking at uh, atomic energy levels, um, and we were looking at uh, certain things, for example, decaying from one energy level to another energy level. So let's say, you know, we were looking at things like if this is minus 13.6 electron volts, this could be another value. And if uh, an electron, for example, in the uh, atom, uh, let's say it dropped down in energy, so it was at some higher value up here, it dropped down. We are learning that there's different photons that are emitted. And these photons came out with the energy E equals HF. So this atomic energy levels told us that uh, these atomic energy levels were quantized because these photons only came in discrete amounts. So that told us they had to come in little energy amounts that are multiples of this H. So only you can only have you know uh, different multiples of it. But now we're talking about something a little bit different. So rather than an atom itself, in other words, the whole entire atom, uh, being um, in different energy levels, in other words, having the uh, electrons being excited. Now we're going to talk about um, the nucleus itself. So if we talk about the nucleus, this is what we mean by nuclear energy levels. We mean the nucleus is uh, changing uh, to something else. So uh, some people call this um, artificial transmutation. But either way, uh, we can talk about uh, different kinds of um, decay. So one of the kinds, for example, is alpha decay. And if we have alpha decay, what we know now is that that really is actually helium, um, which means it's a second element, has two protons. And we know that its uh, nucleon number is four, which means it has two neutrons. Because remember, this nucleon number tells us the number of neutrons plus protons. So this is actually a helium four. That's what an alpha particle is. And we also know that uh, gamma particles, for example, as they were known, you know, the gamma rays, sometimes they're called, that's just light, which is a photon. So just to talk a little bit about these two different things, let's talk about uh, a different uh, or a type of reaction. So for example, I'm going to show you that uh, these ones are also quantized, these nuclear energy levels. So let's say we look at uh, one particular um, decay. So let's say we start off with uh, plutonium. And this plutonium, uh, well, plutonium is the 94th element, so it has uh, 94 uh, protons. And if we start with plutonium, uh, well, let's say we start off with plutonium-242, so that tells us the number of nucleons. Now, let's say it undergoes alpha decay. So if it undergoes alpha decay, that means uh, a helium-4 is kicked out. And then we get something else. And in this case, right here, remember, it's a pretty easy game here. All you have to do is just figure out what number it is. So 2 plus what equals 94. So it's actually going to be something that's 92. And uh, the 92nd element is actually then uranium. And then what number comes up here? Well, 242 minus 4, that's going to be 238. So if, for example, we have plutonium-242 that undergoes alpha decay to make uranium-238. So far, there's nothing uh, really brain-busting going on here, hopefully. But let's say we actually drew the energy levels. Uh, in other words, the energy level diagrams. Here. So let's say we uh, drew it right here. So this right here would be my plutonium uh, 94. So like the element, like the uh, energy level diagrams we were doing before, we can actually do it in a similar way. So we can say uh, plutonium 94. I really keep making this ugly here. So plutonium 94 and it's 242 at the top. It really hates my fours, doesn't it? So 242. So if I take this, I can actually look at what uh, energy that has. So let's just say um, it has an energy of, uh, I looked some things up here, so let's say 4.98 electron volts. Now this thing actually decays, let's say, to something else. Now, rather than before where they, they were just uh, photons being emitted. In this case right here, it's going to undergo alpha decay. And if it does that, uh, its uh, energy level then will be lower. Let's say it'll be 0.31 eV. But there's actually an even lower one that's possible, which is at uh, 0.15 eV. So what this one can do, it can actually go down this way, or it can go down this way. Now both of these are going to kick out an alpha particle. Okay, so both of these right here, you're going to actually kick out an alpha particle here. Actually, I shouldn't really draw it with a uh, squiggly line. That's usually reserved for um, photons. So let's just say I just draw this. This is going to be an alpha particle here. So is this. But there's different types of alpha particle energies. In other words, if it drops from here to here, you're going to get an alpha particle, obviously, with a difference here in energy. 
um, but you can have a different type of alpha particle. So these alpha particles will come in different quantized amounts because they can only come from here to here or from here to here. They can't go from like here to something in the middle because there is no energy state that's possible there. So that's really important to understand. Now, uh, how does it go from this one to this one? Let's talk about actually what these really are. So when it, when it stops at this point right here, this is actually uh, uranium-238. Look at 92 here. And actually, I'm going to cut and paste that because this one right here, um, I'm also going to have um, one right here as well. So if I talk about this one right here, I can have another one down at this point here. So at both of these points, they're both uranium-238. But this one here is more excited state. So this is one where now it has an electron that is in an excited state. And if the electron's in an excited state, what can happen? If it's excited, it might drop down to its lowest level. And that really is where you'll get a photon. In other words, in this case, it'll be a gamma particle. So you can see here that these, um, these alpha particles and these gamma rays or photons do come in discrete, in other words, quantized amounts. Okay, so they always will. However, if we talk about beta decay and neutrinos and antineutrinos, that's something a little bit different. The beta decay comes in continuous amounts. So that means that when we actually look at different uh, beta um, transitions, so to speak, um, then it's actually a continuous amount. So this is really weird that uh, there we don't have them discrete, they're continuous. And it turns out that that's something that was really important. Um, they actually needed a particle. So the fact that this happened, they needed a particle to explain this. Okay, to explain that it came in continuous amounts. So I can show you, for example, let's say we have a, a neutron that uh, decays to a, a proton, for example, uh, plus, now we call this a beta minus. That's actually known as an electron. Or we could also have something like um, proton, and then we can actually say plus, uh, so a proton can actually become a neutron, so in a sort of an opposite way. So a neutron can become a proton with an electron, and uh, a proton can become a neutron as long as we add something called a positron, which would be a plus one. So this one right here is known as, this one right here is electron. This one here is called a positron. These two are antimatter of each other, so that means if they meet, they actually collide and uh, they annihilate. It's kind of cool. But here's the problem, though, that there was a, a problem with energy discrepancy. So in other words, um, what happened is when they actually looked at these, I just want to write this down here, discrepancy, that meant that when you did this, when you actually looked at the energies here, so you started off with a neutron that decayed to a proton plus an electron, in other words, a beta minus, as it's called, there was a problem that uh, there were continuous amounts of energy allowed. In other words, we expected you know, this energy here to be the same as the sum of these two energies. But it turned out when you really looked at it, you could actually get this amount of energy or less. So there needed to be a particle to explain it. And it turns out that was called a neutrino or an antineutrino. By the way, and the same thing happened here too. So there was also you know, continuous amounts. They needed a particle. So actually, this one right here is known as an anti-neutrino. We write it like this. And this one right here is known as a regular neutrino. So those had to be little particles that were, um, here we call it here, anti-neutrino. This one right here is known as a neutrino. These always accompany beta minus or beta plus. You always get these different types of neutrinos. This one has a little minus on top to tell you it's an anti-neutrino. And these particles had to be little things that are very, very light or with no mass, and uh, they have to be neutral. And they're actually very hard to detect. They only started really detecting them uh, since 1953. For example, there's a big um, observatory that they have. It's called the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory, uh, and that's in Canada, for example. And they put it really deep in a mine. And that's because these neutrinos don't uh, react with many things. So they're actually very difficult to detect. But we can detect them, and they're very, very important. 